Meanwhile, at the Hall of Cage. Caging greatness. Loading in. Three, two, one. Nick Cage smooches good. Rule number one. Don't work where you live. Rule number two, don't write anything down. Well, I'm one of those fortunate people who like my job, sir. Got my first chemistry set when I was seven. Get my eyebrows off. We never saw the cat again. Been into it ever since. Sometimes I let matches burn down to my fingertips just to feel something. Anything. People don't throw things at me anymore. Maybe because I carry a bow around. I just stole 50 cars in one night. I'm a little tired, I'm a little wired, and I think I deserve a little appreciation. I should always trust my instincts as a shamanic thespian. Tool up, honey bunny. It's time to get bad guys. Sorry, boss, but there's only two men I trust. One of them's me, and the other's not you. Of course, you know, death will be a much better fate than watching Between Worlds. <laughs> and on that cold open. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Cage and Greatness, the show where we discuss the films of Nicolas Cage and how Thomas Jefferson was a massive prick. Today is a very special episode. <laughs> special. Yeah. Because it might Stone be... Glitter. <laughs> Might be one of the worst Nicolas Cage films that we've seen. Might be the worst. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to beat. It's, it's bad. bad. Mm. But it's, it's bad. Yeah. Just to give you a little spoiler alert for the episode. It's bad. <laughs> Just put a content <laughs> warning on the episode, too. That it is. <laughs> Very, it made me extremely uncomfortable. It's bad. <clears throat> uh, so here we are. It's Cannon. It's Jeremy. And it's me. woo <laughs> And we watched the movie Between Worlds from 2018, starring Nicolas Cage and that one German actress whose name I don't remember, but was in a movie called All I Want with Elijah Wood that's actually pretty solid. You should look that up. Franca Potente? Oh, I think so, yeah. Potente? The other, and the other character, the girl, she was on Vampire Diaries. Penelope Mitchell? Yes. I've never seen Vampire Diaries. I haven't either. I just looked at Wikipedia. <laughs> I, I never thought it was appealing to me, but somehow I feel like it would be more appealing than this film. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, for sure. So, let's go around. <laughs> Can I go last this time, since technically I... <laughs> no, no, I don't have to go last. Um, we'll go around. No, we're going to put you on a pedestal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was briefly, like, give your star rating, and just a quick, just a quick six. I'm sure we'll have plenty of time. Barney hated it too. Barney's like, y'all talking about Between Worlds? You talking about Between Worlds? Yeah, he's, he's he sat on the couch for maybe 20 minutes of that movie and then left. Oh, wow. Even Barney hated it. He was Jesus. smarter than all of us. Yeah. In case you're just tuning in, Barney's a dog, y'all. Barney's the best dog. The best dog. He's the, one of the softest, for sure. We're currently in the process of making him the official Cajun greatness dog. <laughs> well, we already have three, if there's Barney and then Darwin and Piper. Yeah, okay. Mm. It could be a Cajun greatness gang. We got a Cajun stable of dogs. Sick. Cerberus. Cerberus. Oh. oh my god. I can see it now. <laughs> Guardian of the gates of cuteness. <laughs> Except for Barney to be the one the one out of the three of them that wouldn't understand the point of just barking at nothing sometimes. <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, where's the people? <laughs> so Jeremy, what's your star rating for Between uh, Worlds? If I could, I wish I could have gave it a negative star. Like, <laughs> so bad. I think I remember telling you this one after, after I watched it and I messaged you, but I was just like, I don't, what? At, at this point, you know, I have to give it something. So it's getting a half. Okay. That's it. Like, and the only reason it's getting that half is because it was set in Alabama. <laughs> That's the only reason. I'm not giving it any. There, there was no redeeming qualities from this movie. It was shot in Alabama. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I read about, like, the notes about, like, how old is it? Like, this woman wrote it with Cage in mind. And I'm like, mm -hmm. wrote, That's, produced, directed. <clears throat> yeah, it's never a good sign. Should have delegated some, I think. Um, Should have gotten someone else to look at that script. Yeah. So <laughs> I gave it a full star. Because a half star is the lowest you can go, and unlike the Bruce Willis movie Red, they pronounced Mobile correctly. 
Wait, did I say it wrong in red? Uh huh. Remember, seen. they're in the they're in the airport where they're trying to find James Remar's character. Yeah. Uh, right before they go there, and it's like, oh, we found him. He's in Mobile, Alabama. Oh my god! <laughs> like every, uh, I remember a long time ago, uh, I used to have like some kind of like. It was like a world view map or something on my computer. Like, you'd put the disc in. If you click on places, it would pronounce it weird. Like, you know, we would pronounce it if we're looking at the map, Abu Dhabi. Mm-hmm. It would be like Abu Dhabi. And I'm like, oh. And then you click on mobile, and it would call it mobile. Like, and that, that makes sense if it's a computer. But if you're a real live human person, and you're pronouncing the name of a city, especially if it's in a full production like Red, I feel like you should do your due diligence to make sure you mm. fucking say it right. No, man, it's called bass, not bass. Yeah. And then, like, the editing process. Like, there are so many people who should have caught that. Like, no, that ain't how you pronounce that. Oh, she probably edited this herself, too. Yeah. It's like, well, that's an actual word, and that's how you pronounce that word. But, yeah. but this is the- Alabama. <laughs> this is Alabama. It's like that typo right. that was in Kingsman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't forget, we have a city here named Arab. That we do. Yep. Uh, yeah, we do. So. Hell, I believe, as well. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of... I had a teacher from Bucksnort. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah, so one star, because they pronounced Mobile correctly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, that's doing better than what I thought. <laughs> Cannon, you foisted this upon us. I did. Um, I have developed a new game at, uh, at home where if, to knock out all my blind buys, where I close my eyes... And I take my finger up and down, and then I stop on a shelf, and then I go left to right, and then I stop again. Uh-huh. And whatever movie is closest, or the whatever blind buy is closest, or the one that my finger is on, I watch. And on this particular night, uh, I believe I had a triple whammy because I landed on Bernie, which I was like, I think I've seen Bernie, but I don't know if I have. So I watched that. Also, Belly. With uh, DMX and Method Man and, uh, and Nas, and that happened too. And um, and then Between Worlds. And I acquired this movie in a Nicolas Cage haul on eBay. It was just like six Nick Cage movies. I hadn't seen like maybe four out of the six. And mm, it's getting a star from me. A full star just because... I still think we've kind of seen worse. I mean, Not by much. I'm mean, still being destroyed this copy afterwards. Oh, no, I can't. I'm also having a worst of the worst to my collection, too, and this nice. is one of them. Good. Like, I will agree with you. I looked up to see if we, the Nicolas Cage movies that we've watched on the show before and after Jeremy joined us, and only one got a worse rating than this. And it was left behind. I knew it. <laughs> so, uh, just I would rather watch Between Worlds twice in a row and watch Left Behind again. I I have to agree, and I've watched it one and a half-ish times now, so... <laughs> I think I watched that movie a long time ago when I was younger, when the books came... Like, after the that when the movie came out because of church obligation. Well, this is a remake. Oh, oh Nicolas yeah. Cage starred in. Oh, so this yes. is not the, uh, the other one. No, this isn't the Kirk Cameron bullshit. Oh, okay. This is the Nicolas Cage remake that was actually only covered about the first 20 minutes of the Kirk Cameron bullshit and like the first fourth of the first book. I must have been asleep in the vent that day y'all watched it. This was before you joined us actually. Yeah, It was, was always around. Fucking terrible. I feel like we should give Jeremy his own mini-sode and make him watch that one day and just to have like his take on <laughs> it. <laughs> Since you were left behind and whatnot. Yeah, I feel like you might bump your Between Worlds score a bit. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> The uncomfortable feeling that Between Worlds gave me, it was part of why I only got the half. Left Behind doesn't have that uncomfortable feeling, but it's a two-hour movie that feels like a week. This yeah. Between Worlds was 90 minutes, but felt like an hour and a half. Yeah, like a for longer. me, like it, it felt like it went by real quick because the whole time I'm like... Oh, it didn't for me. The whole time I'm like, okay, this is, this is the setup portion. Like, I know what's happening. They're setting up characters. Surely... It's only been 10 to 15. What do you mean we're halfway through? <laughs> Nothing's happened. Oh, no. Once it got to that midsection for me, it just like felt like time slowed down. I was just like, what's going so, on? So here's the plot of Between Worlds for you, our dear listener. Uh, Nicholas Cage runs into a fellow truck driver played by Franco Patente, who is being choked by a third truck driver who he punches. And she's like, you ruined it. And he's like, the fuck? <laughs> And she's like, I was using my out-of-body power experience 
and stuff to help my daughter. She was in a wreck, and I was putting her soul back in her body. And he's like, oh, my bee dog. It just accepts it blindly. <laughs> uh, he asked a few questions, but then once yeah. she gets into the explanation that daughter's in coma, he kind of rolls with yeah, it. Like it's like like fifteen seconds of skepticism because he's worried about the cops. Like sort of skepticism. Also, who called them? Great question. Who called the cops? He's like the shit. Cops are on the way. Yeah, I mean, probably the. Uh, you hear sirens. Probably but... the the attendant whose ass crack we zoomed in. On. Oh my! I wrote that crack. down in my notes that there was an ass gate moment. <laughs> so okay, so he picks her up. Or she's like, she's like, can you take me to Mobile since you fucked up my my dream walking, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> He's like, yeah, sure. And they get there, and like his her daughter is not doing good. She crashes again, and she's like, ah, you gotta choke me so I can do the thing. And he goes, yeah, okay. And so he chokes her. But the problem is, she fucks up. She doesn't get the right spirit. And Nicolas Cage's recently deceased wife jumps in the daughter's body. That's crazy, right? Uh. And and there's a nurse in there who just le- looks knowingly at them. And like, oh, you're fucking with shit you don't understand. And they just gloss over that for a bit. And so they take the daughter home, and then she starts acting weird. And then she's like, ah, Nicolas Cage, I'm really your wife. And he's like... Yeah, I accept this immediately. Let's have sex. Because he's also having sex with Frank and Patente. And she finds out, and she's like, what the fuck? And he's like, it's my wife. And she's like, I accept this immediately. I don't like it. we got to get my daughter's soul back. And he's like, eh, ah, do we? And she's like, yeah. And so then the daughter, the daughter wife was like, hey, we got to rob this guy that the daughter knew and then the drug dealer friend that got her in the wreck in the first place, and we got to skip out. we got to leave. And Nicholas Cage is like, yeah, sure. And the dude's friend gets shot in the gut. He's like, oh, no, we killed someone. And the daughter wife is like, yeah, it's fine. And he's <laughs> like, yeah, okay. And so they go to the house where his wife died because it's burned down. His wife and daughter, right? They burned in the house. And then they're just hanging out with a generator and shit because nobody minds. And then Frank and Patente gets assaulted by the, the dude who knew the daughter. And he's like, oh, what the fuck? Y'all robbed me. And she's like, this is going to sound weird, but that's not actually my daughter. And he's like, yeah, that sounds right. That's right. <laughs> just totally accepting all this bullshit, right? And so they're like, okay, we got to find her. They don't go to just, they just don't go to the house. They have to use, like, the spirit walking to find her. And so they do, and they roll up. And like, all right, get out of my daughter's body. And she's like, no. <laughs> and then, she, then the mom gets shot. Like, Frank Pretende gets shot. Like, ah! And that lets your spirit walk. And she, like, takes the wife out of the body, but not before the wife says, you shouldn't have left me alone, Nick Cage. That's why I killed our daughter and burned the house down. He's like, what? And just loses his fucking mind. So the daughter gets put back in her own body by the mom who's dead. And she wakes up. She's been gone the whole movie. She's like, huh? Where am I? Mom? Oh, no, you're dead. And the dude's like, we got to go. And she's like, yeah, I accept that. And they get in the car and just run. And then Nicholas Cage grabs a gas can and pours the gas on himself and lights himself on fire and burns the rest of the house down. And that's the credits. Oh, and there's that little scene at the very end with the kid shooting his dad or something. Oh, yeah, no, they have, like, a flashback. That was Nicolas Cage's character. Yeah, that's what I... The whole, like, for some reason, they put this at the very end where Nicolas Cage's character is shown as a kid shooting his dad in the face because he was abusive. And that's that. That's where it is. That's what happened. And that was the movie and more entertaining than actually watching the movie. (laughs) But, yeah... Like, like, you left out the part that, like, her spirit, her out-of-body experience powers only works if you choke her. That's what podcasts are for. We're going to get to that. Yeah. It's going to fucking drown. Like, that was, that's not important for the Reader's Digest version. No. no. <laughs> no. It probably wasn't even that important for the movie. Like I said, I started this movie again just to try to re... How long has it been? About a week and a half since I've seen this pile of dog shit? I watched um, it. Wednesday? I watched it a week ago oh, on last Sunday. God. Um, it's like that opening scene, like that is supposed to be uh, the mom and the daughter, right? Like a, an accident that happened prior, right? I, was, that's Frank and Patente. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a flashback where she says her and her friend fell in okay. ice and she drowned and found out that she could leave her body. Because yeah. yeah. going back to the ending scene, you know, we flip-flop here. We, we go all over the place. Uh, y'all know what happens. It's fine. The ending, I... I blinked and missed it, but there is like one throwaway line about Nick Cage's father being abusive. Yeah. And then I had forgotten about it. And then this scene comes out of left fucking field at the end, the literal end of this movie. And I'm just confused. I'm like, is this like, is this supposed to be like the setup for a new thing? No, it was just a small line that I forgot because I had watched like just some of the craziest, gnarliest 
not gnarliest, but like weirdest sex scenes I've ever seen in a movie. I never want to see Nicolas Cage in a sex scene ever again. Let me let me pose this question while I'm talking about the sex. Which was more uncomfortable to watch? Was it this or Zandalee? I thought about <laughs> Zandalee the entire time. I was like, Zandalee was very uncomfortable. I'd rather watch Zandalee. Wow. I mean, ooh, is that but, bad? To, the, yes. thing, the thing about Zandalee was it man wasn't fucking a 17 to 18 year old like teenage person with a spirit of your wife in that was what was very uncomfortable for me i was about to say her age was never disclosed but i mean i got the sense she was more like 1920s oh she just threw the word teenager out there like I mean, a couple like, times and i'm like eh, she can drive obviously because she had a motorcycle yeah i'm like this age is but in alabama you can get a motorcycle license at 15 uh, oh that, that doesn't make it any better you know that right no. but, but I, I wrote I wrote this one down because of the opening scenes where you're talking about what they're they're in the ice. Mm -hmm. They're not actually in ice. I had to, I, at first I was sitting there and I was looking at it. I was like, "What this is this weird?" I was like, "Something strange." And I realized that they're in a pool and they have a tarp over the water. Fuck off! But in the second shots where it's like side by side, you can see the fade line where they just took an ice background and plastered it on there. And I was like, That's funny. "This is green screen." Okay, they're green screening in a pool. That's funny. I mean, God, <laughs> so I, didn't, I didn't even noticed that. God, it's, it was a two shot splice. Like. Yeah, we we open this fucking thing off like it, you said. It's got like very like Nolan like credits where it's like the letters are spraced out. It's like somber music, and I was like, okay, this is like I'm getting some kind of like insomnia vibes here. <laughs> but then uh, no, that was about the most we ever get anywhere near that. Oh, okay, my turn. Okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> we open the movie, and um, Jesus Christ, Nicolas Cage, and you see the feet dangling. Right out the gate. <laughs> and um, with our first product placement with a dude with, you know, 10 miles of crack, we get Hostess Cupcakes. This movie had to have been fun. The only, like, outside funding had to have been Hostess, the state of Alabama, <laughs> and I don't know. I feel like I'm missing one product placement in this movie. Probably whatever his pills were that he was taking. <laughs> God. Because I think we saw the... No, we didn't see the box for those, I don't think. Yeah, it just has to be Hostess in the state of Alabama. Yeah, like, they're... Oh, God. It's, it's like Jimmy said, it, everyone is just so accepting of like literally everything. There's no arguments made. And it's like, what, what? I'm your wife. I'm your dead wife. Really? It's like, yeah. And it's like, let's fuck. <laughs> and they do. Everybody is quick to believe everything and also really quick to bang. The first scene we get um, with the mom and Nicolas Cage. Uh, at first, it's like, it's already implied because you see a quick snippet of the sex scene you haven't seen yet. Oh. Before it even happens. Such a weird choice. God, there yeah. are some a lot of fucking toys. We have, we have flash forwards in this movie. <laughs> oh, God. And at first, it's, he's like, and, and this is the one thing that bothered me. Like, I think phrasing is important sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, he goes... She obviously wants to bone, and you know, as a, as a, a generous thank you for you know helping me save my daughter, and <laughs> so he at first he says, and I'm pretty sure he says something along the lines of he goes, oh God, not not since my wife and not since my wife and daughter I've done that, and my brain immediately goes, what have you been doing with your daughter, Nick Cage? That you stop that right now. The shot where she's explaining about her daughter, and he holds up the picture of the wife and daughter. He's like, she's like, you have kids? And he's like, yeah, wife and a girl. And she's like, oh, sweet. He's like, eh, like no, wrong. He's, he's like, oops, he's just, oops, they're dead. Oops, like, they're dead. Wow. He also said, we don't hurt women down south, which is the biggest lie in the film. <laughs> I mean, he it was he something along those lines was said in Con Air, if I remember correctly. Oh, not I treat true. women like that. Also, we're glossing over the best fucking line of the movie. One of the best lines in the movie. After he takes out the initial dude that's choking her in the bathroom, he goes, next time, why don't you face up with a man gator? Which, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> his, his character in this movie is so bizarre. Because it's like ratty, like hair. He has like all the rings on. Like I'm pretty sure those are just his rings. Yeah, no, like, that's 100%. 100%. Yeah, those are his rings, yeah. He brought his own wardrobe. Yeah. That, that, that gator shirt? I'm, yeah. I'm, has to be his. I mean, it matches one of the jackets that he likes to wear. <laughs> oh, I also did forget a bit. The nurse who gave that knowing look comes back later when Frank and Patent is like, hey, something's wrong with my daughter. And she's, of course, she's got like a strange, like almost Jamaican accent. 
because it's the the trope of the magical black person to help the white Lee. Like, you shouldn't have uh, messed with the forces. He's like, but I want my daughter back. What should I do? You should do nothing. You've already fucked all this up, lady. Seriously. And then she never comes back. She's like, confirms, like, yeah, that's not your daughter in that body. Like, how would you know? Because trope. <laughs> you could have told me that when we took her out of the hospital. I'll say the only time you even get an inkling that sh- that, that nurse knows what's going on is this when uh, mommy is in the spirit world, she looks directly at her and then makes eye contact. And they're just like, mm-hmm, here we go. And then this body switch happens that nobody knows until, uh, I mean, we know, but. <laughs> It was so bizarre. Also, you feel like you get a movie called Between Worlds. You see, the, the premise in itself is not bad, but they really should have just called it Between Biloxi and Mobile <laughs> because nothing interesting happens. None of the shots are interesting. And according to Jeremy, these shots are just getting worse as we're talking because I didn't even notice the green screenery at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Like, we couldn't notice the green screen. There's too much kudzu in the way. It's all green. <laughs> Well, there's just like there's a couple of shots in that movie where like you know oh we we bought like someone that has to be someone's house mm-hmm. uh, and they use the same they use like I don't know where like the hospital looked fine the shots where he goes to Biloxi and gets his truck repossessed mm-hmm. because he's three days late when he could have just left when he needed to but decided against it. Yeah. Can we talk about that span of time? Because they pick the daughter up, and it's already established that he has to be in Biloxi like by noon the next day, I think. Yeah. And then it cuts to black three days later. And he's still there. And then he goes, he finally goes to his boss or whatever, whoever guy he's talking to, and he's surprised that he's not getting paid? Right. Like, what the hell? You were supposed to be here like two and a half days ago, bruh. Yeah. Also, um, uh, the only, uh, the only, sp- I, I checked the spoiler bits uh, on IMDb, and the only thing that it offered was that guy playing, and he's only listed as manager, ad lib the line, you've been a boil on my ass. And that was the only spoiler uh, <laughs> trivia on IMDb for this That's movie. That's funny. <laughs> it should have included another thing on the spoiler that said, <laughs> may need copious amounts to get through film. That was also the other, the other sponsor of this movie is Jack Daniels. Yeah, that's right. There was a Jack bottle in there, too. A couple times. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's just like, I mean, even if you can green screen, like, ice, we can, like, green screen, like, the only, like, when she goes between worlds, it's just like... Put a filter on Just a little weird (laughs) nothingness, really. It's like maybe some lens flares they call J.J. Abrams in. (laughs) And it was just, there's nothing here. And I also noticed, and this is crazy to me, I was just like, man, they're trying real hard to make this music like like David Lynchian. And then I yeah. looked up who did the fucking music. That's where their yeah. budget went, him and Cage. Oh, yeah. And, yep. uh, and the song at the very end. Yeah. What was the I've already forgotten. What was it? Uh, it was a licensed song, because they so they had to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, Leader of the Pack. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's, that's right. That's what played when Nicolas Cage uh, burned himself alive was leader of the pack I that, forgot that that's probably yeah. the only reason I gave it a star because of that ending <laughs> scene the, the CGI fire well, was, he reacted harder to bees than he did this fire I have, <laughs> I have a theory that they fucked that up really because he pours himself he pours gas all over himself right mm-hmm. and then he flicks his lighter and that's when he gets caught on fire mm-hmm. and then he's smoking a cigarette just fine and puts it out on himself mm-hmm. I think he was directed that the flames would start when he put it out on himself with a cigarette because that'd make more sense yeah. but they fucked it up and put it when he flicked the lighter I, th- I was reading somewhere too like when it got to the because I, I read a little bit like halfway through the movie because I was just curious about some stuff and I saw where they were talking about his performance in Ghost Rider is one of the reasons why she wanted him and then when that scene <laughs> happened I was like Oh no! Uh, <laughs> I was like, "Oh no! This is an alternate world where Johnny Blaze was really just thrown off." Like and just, leather jacket, yeah. check. Uh, I yeah. mean, his, his hair probably would have set ablaze with all the oil that was already in it throughout this whole movie. He did not take a bath throughout. I mean, that was very accurate to truckers. Uh, I used to work in the trucking industry, so he's allowed. He to was actually, <laughs> he was actually pretty clean for truck driver. Yeah, the the clothes uh, weren't that stained. I, I know that little denim on him. That denim get up he rocked in that one scene was pretty uh, bright, yeah. And vibrant. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. Uh, but like, and I, I read where the writer and director producer of this film <laughs> say film. Uh, the writer director producer <laughs> same person the by the way. <laughs> yeah, same same person. The original script had no supernatural elements. 
So it was worse somehow? They, they She added the stuff. She was like, well, just a regular thriller, but I wanted it to be more like a David Lynch movie. That's when they added... God. That's when they added the supernatural <laughs> stuff, <laughs> such as it is, and probably the composer. And the whole... I didn't see that until after I watched the movie, and the whole time I'm thinking, this would have been so much better. Well, not much better. It would have made more sense if it was just a straightforward thriller of truck driver meets young teenager who reminds him of his wife and can't help himself, as opposed to everyone just blindly going, oh, okay, that's that's your wife's spirit in the, yeah. the daughter body. No, that's yeah, cool. That makes total sense. <laughs> that's a thing that happens all the time. In fact, my grandma was possessed by B.B. King last week. It was crazy. Like, it's just, like, the, the fuck, right? It, just, it would have made so much more sense. It was like, no, he's just a skeevy truck driver who misses his wife, and then people die and he kills himself. Did she play any good tunes while she was possessed by B.B. King? <laughs> no, her muscle memory was shit. Like, she couldn't, damn it. Like, B.B. kept trying to make the fingers work, and they wouldn't. All I can think of now is, like, if, if you were real the supernatural elements, I'm just like... Isn't this, is this just Alabama's version of Fatal Instinct? <laughs> fatal Attraction? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it would have worked so much better as a straightforward thriller. It still would have been shit. Oh, yeah. But it wouldn't have been stupid. Oh, God. I mean, I guess you'd have to, like, ham, I mean, I guess you don't have to ham it home a little bit, but if you're putting, like, a, a spirit in a body, I guess we got to get a little banana sandwich here, but at least execute it. With, I don't know, actual execution. <laughs> yeah. Like, I haven't made a fucking movie before in my life, but I'm pretty sure I've edited some of my TikToks better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Speak, like, ugh, like, time phrase. Like, the daughter is in the hospital because of a motorcycle accident. Yes. And we get just, like, brief glimpses of her on a bike a couple of times in this movie. Once, I believe, is just thrown in our face out of the left field, and then another time when the mom is actually explaining what's going on. Yeah. And then you see just a bunch of cop cars there that, you know, they probably, like, hired them. Like, y'all are not doing shit. Yeah. Sitting about. Be a couple of uh, props for us, please. Baldwin County Police. Something <laughs> easy to do. And, like, the, the daughter's, like, her face is super bruised when they get home. Mm-hmm. And then you don't get a sense of how long Nicolas Cage is now living with these people because he lost his job, by the way. And Frank is like, yeah, you helped us, guy that I've known for a week. Move on in. Oh, yeah. And he convinces uh, the mother to drop $500 to get his belongings back. Actually, I, I remember that distinctly. He did not convince her. Oh, yeah. no, she just, just her. Yeah. Uh-huh. He told her it was going to be like he, he told her what was going on. And she went to do it out of the kindness of her heart while he was fucking her daughter slash his wife. Yep. Uh, but like the, the daughter comes home with a bruise and there's no sense of how long time is going on because the bruise just fades and fades super quickly. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the only idea you have of how long that he's been at their house. And that sort of bruise would take at least two, three weeks to fade away completely. So it had to have been two or three weeks of her, the daughter wife skulking around and just watching her, uh, the body she's inhabiting, that mom and her uh, whole husband having sex. Yeah. The soul, like, produces uh, the right cells needed to uh, <laughs> kick the bruise in the balls. Right, yeah. Super, <laughs> super healing, thanks to the spirit of the dead wife. Well, I mean, we got to think... We, I think that's a better idea than... Yeah, no, I mean, I'm accepting that just as much as all the characters accepted the spirit world shit. That makes total God. sense to me. It's I, perfect. Out of everyone, I will say, I believe Nick Cage, like, gave some just some pushback but not much like especially when we get the reveal yeah and, it, and then he's just like what he's like i think she calls him majors because that was his last name okay. yeah well, i didn't even fucking catch that <laughs> but this is like, also the fourth time he's played a character named joe fun yeah, fact yes actually and one of the movies is joe just yeah. called joe we haven't got there yet but yeah. we're getting there mm-hmm. um also this is Oh, right out the gate. There was no questions had here at all. And she's already bugging out a little bit when they first get home because Nicolas Cage, like, you know, brings her to the bed. It's like, the more you rest, the better you'll feel and whatnot. When he goes away, she goes, don't leave me. I'm not good alone. Yeah. It's just like the first inkling. But, you know, he's a little weirded out. He's like, okay, it never occurs to him that that was a thing that his wife said well, at he's the time. The, he's the first one to see the daughter when she comes out, when she wakes up the second time. Yeah. She's like, oh, you're here. And then he goes to leave and she says that line too. And it's like, yeah, it's like you're still here. Because she also says like, oh, I thought it was a dream at first, which you know, that's probably some of the best fucking writing this movie had. That in the, uh, the you put the couch in couch line. That was fucking funny. <laughs> but also, like, it, it's just when you 
figure it out. He just goes, no, no, no. It's like, you don't say that. And it, it, all it takes is just a couple like arm drapes across the, the back of the neck and some red fucking stockings, baby. And he is all about it. That is the first, well, the second Fugs in, this is the first Fugs in of the daughter, but the <laughs> second sex scene of the whole movie. There's three, right? Yeah. yeah. Technically four if you count the flashback with his actual wife where he has sex with her reading a book called Memories Written by Nicolas Cage. Fun fact, according to Wikipedia, <laughs> that's not a flashback scene. That is him actually having sex with his wife in the spirit world oh, simultaneously God. having sex with the daughter's oh, body God. in the uh, world. I don't buy that one fucking bit. According bit. to the Wikipedia plot summary. They can tell me. <laughs> you can fucking shit on my head and call it a hailstorm. It's still doo-doo. <laughs> <laughs> But God, I had to check it again. I actually watched a video about this movie after watching it. Oh my like, God. Look, you put way more into this. Than look, look, commentary videos on shitty movies are my bread and butter. I fucking love this shit. Right? <laughs> this guy, like, I he talked about the book part, and I had to go back and find this. I'm like, no, uh, I didn't even see that shit. Mm-hmm. And I have a pretty, like, decent TV I'm watching this on, but, you know, I guess it's how you shoot it. But it says, I know it's a fake book. Yeah, this is yeah, a real book. It's like, and, but, like, the thing, from the book, he says something about like he rode his hard cock. <laughs> I never want to see Nick. Can you take someone's Oscar away? Uh, is, that, is that a thing? If Tom Hooper gets to keep his for Les Mis after Cats, then Nicolas Cage gets to keep his. I guess there's a fucking point. <laughs> but oh my god, speaking of weird things to say during a sex scene, the oh, I was wrong. He, he, he strips the, the mom twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He strips the mom twice. And then on the second scene, he is describing what happens in The Exorcist while they're fucking. Yep. yep. He does. So he starts to cross. He says, fuck me, please, fuck me. I'm just I haven't seen The Exorcist, y'all. I'm sorry. But I'm just like, what are we doing? Just, okay, I don't... If you do weird things in a movie, just saying that you're trying to be David Lynchian is not an excuse. Like, there's one scene where before Nick Cage goes back to, you know, try to get his uh, payment, hugs the mom, and he's like, oh, come here, sugar. And he sounds, I want to think he sounds, he's trying to be sincere, but he sounds condescending as fuck, <laughs> acting. <laughs> but um, he takes a bottle of one of the medications, yeah. just pops it open, drinks it. Now, he drinks, but he's, he, I, but in one part, he's like, oh, I don't really want a lot. So I'm assuming he's not a huge alcoholic, but he's, like, taking yeah. medicine that doesn't belong to him and just, like... He trashed a couple of bottles of Jack in that movie. Yeah. Again, very accurate to most truck drivers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> God damn it. You got me again, Shannon. <laughs> Fuck. Like, the th- I think what happened, like, what I have to believe happened, because Nicolas Cage is a very talented actor. He, he is. That. He is. Yeah. Nicolas Cage is also the sort of actor who's going to do what the director tells him. Mm-hmm. Like he's gonna like I think it should be this way. You think it should be that way. Let, let's try it both ways and see what works. Like let's see what happens. And so he's going to go wherever the director tells him to go. If the director is either inexperienced or a talentless hack who shouldn't have been behind the camera, or also completely psyched about the fact that hey I got Nicolas Cage for my movie, there's going to be no direction. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be we're trying to make it weird. Do what you want. It's like okay. You'll, I'll make it weird and you'll do the best you can with the editing. Mm. And like he does that shit because he's just being weird. I'm sure there's several takes that are better and several takes that are way worse. And he's like, I trust the director to put the right take in the film to make it the best film possible. And that trust was unfounded and misplaced. I mean, given the calls they made, I doubt they had the money for the film for any other takes. So if you have an actual <laughs> physical copy of this, mm-hmm. I need to know if there's director commentary for this movie. Yeah, I have I a physical copy of it. Oh, you do? We I was find given out. a physical copy, yeah. Oh. Is, is, there director, is there director's commentary on this? Not sure. I can look it up real quick. I will say, uh, when I said I got this in a six-pack uh, uh, Nicolas Cage grab bag on eBay, I think I got all these movies for like 10 bucks. <laughs> So I still think I came out slightly ahead, but I I knew I going in some of these were going to be fucking stinkers. Like <laughs> this, this, this all my brain's like I was like, hey, as, as bad as I didn't enjoy, as, as much as I didn't enjoy this, I would just want to listen to the commentary to see where the thought process is in some of this. I've actually been meaning to listen to a lot more uh, DVD. Con- I used to do that a lot when I was a kid. I, I do it a lot when I get my Criterion movies. Ooh, I, ooh, I bet they have some good stuff on those. I haven't thought about that. Oh yeah. But uh, speaking of uh, good stuff, Between Worlds... It's not. <laughs> it is... This is definitely... Um, 
Definitely a paycheck movie for Nick Cage. Like, big time. I do agree. I'm pretty sure he did literally everything that director asked of him. And, you know, Nick Cage got to pay some bills. That's notorious. We all know that. He's finally paid off, though. Really? Yeah. Okay. Fuck yeah. Now we can... That's why he did an A24 movie. Uh-huh. Mm, I can't wait to see that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if anybody heard that. I had to chase some birds off. They were attacking the sparrows, and I don't like it. Look now. Y'all about to be getting out of here. I don't believe there's a director's commentary track. I would be surprised if there's even a trailer for a bonus feature on that. <laughs> I'm sure there's not even a section for deleted scenes. Like, even the two production companies that were involved, I guess, no offense, they look like, uh, and y'all know me, I'm a fan of the the butt rock and the new metal. This looks like like early 90s, I mean, late 90s, early 2000s. It's like, rise up productions, high voltage pictures. I'm like, yep, this was definitely made in oh, Alabama. No. I made sure to write a specific little star next to it when I saw Saban films. Now, Saban fi- now that was the only... You can it can go either way when you get Saban films. I'll I'll be honest. Those people who did Power Rangers. I know, but I I, I mean what I say. <laughs> you see a movie today oh, okay. with Saban films in it. It can either be okay or what the fuck. <laughs> I did notice that the opening like film logo bits. Most of those were better edited and better produced than the rest of the movie. <laughs> yes. Yes, actually. Because there was one. I was like, wow, this is the start of the movie. This is actually pretty high quality. Oh, they produced it. Mm. Yeah. No, these are are reels that they sent to the editor. I will say, as someone who has recently watched uh, another very shitty movie that I'm pretty sure I rated lower, uh, uh, Nefarious... Um, I, when I saw Rise Up, I thought it was going to be like like a, a Christian propaganda movie company. Oh, no. But uh, with all the with all the thugs in, in it, I was wrong. I was most <laughs> yeah, definitely no, wrong. Definitely. <laughs> like like oh my god, I I mean it when I say it. I don't want to see Nick Cage in another sex scene. And here's something else: as a fan of Trees, um, these two <clears throat> are like acting high. No one has ever acted like that after they've smoked. <laughs> not a, not, not after your first time. Okay, maybe your first time, but no one is. No, that was ridiculous. That believe it or not, that is when I was like Nick Cage. Give me, give me Oscar Goldman right now. Give it to me right now. In my head, what I felt was that those were just. That's what they were doing for fun, and the numbers yeah. that they had taken are what made them act like that. Because that also would be very in line. With the average truck driver. Uh, don't you know <laughs> that caffeine constricts the blood veins in your... Mm, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's also, I'm just like, we also got science in this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't have coffee because I can't do my spirit walking because it doesn't choke me right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that a lot. Because at first I was, I was like, oh, I like Frank. She's been in... Like she's she's been in like movie All I Want with Elijah Wood, great mm-hmm. movie. Y'all should look it up. It was really solid. Yeah, twenty fifteen. It's good stuff. And I was like, yeah, she's she's really good. And I'm like, oh, she's trying her best. She was. That's the thing. I've seen her in something. I can't make it out. Like, it definitely felt like she was trying her best. Do you want to know what I thought that the the daughter who played the wife also, I thought she was the the best actor. Like, she had the best performance in the movie. I agree. I agree with that, actually, yeah. I thought she was really solid with what she was given, doing her damnedest, and accurately portrayed both the teenage girl and, oh, I'm a dead wife currently in a teenage girl body. Isn't that weird? We're just going to accept it. This happens all the time. We're just going to run with it. Yeah. And they did have an actress to portray the dead wife, but yeah. I don't even remember well, how she was. She was only had. in the, the, the sex scene and the... the She's the house, the alternate house. world, yeah, like the alternate, the ghost sex scene and the ghost house part. Like she, okay. she didn't have any actual lines. She was just there, mm-hmm. and she looked so similar to the daughter that you'd be forgiven for thinking it's the same person. And then they had the ghost of the the daughter was in the house, with the little Jack in the Box mm-hmm. scene. Oh God, she was. That's, that's right. I've never seen it, but she was a uh, Lola in Run Lola Run. Yeah. Also, the love interest in the first two uh, Jason Bourne movies, okay. and she was in Blow. That Johnny Depp movie. Really? Okay. Yeah. Who was she in Blue? Barbara Buckley. It's been a long time since wow. I Wow. I own that movie now. I, I haven't. Yeah, wow. I don't remember her in. She's also in The Conjuring 2. Mm, I hated the first one. I haven't watched any of the rest of them. Very I watched the first one with my family, which was just like, my family jump scares real easily. I got a little pushback on that one for putting my opinion on that movie out there. All I want is from 2002. Yeah. Okay. 
Really but, solid movie though. Horror and Maisie Moore's in it. Me and horror movies nowadays just don't get along that well either, just because I'm just. If it's PG thirteen, I usually try and steer clear of them. Yeah, yeah, that's too scary for me at PG thirteen. <laughs> no, they're just either they're just like I don't just never really they don't die very well with me. I wasn't making a joke. I know. <laughs> I'm easily startled. I think the last scary movie I saw in theaters was Drag Me to Hell. That's, a good, That's a good one to fucking see yeah. in theaters, though. Oh, it was funny because I remember we went in to go see it, knowing what's going to happen. Like, because it's like, oh, this is Sam Raimi in a horror movie. Like, this oh, is going to be good. Fuck yeah! And yeah. the entire theater is just like losing their mind. And me and my friend, are, who are big like Evil Dead fans, are like, yeah! <laughs> God, I need to watch that one again. That's on a great movie. And then PG yeah. thirteen, right? Yeah, it is. I think one is PG. It's, it's creepy as fuck. But that's Sam Raimi knowing what to do. Exactly. With because it's a lot of vomit instead of a lot of blood. Well, it's a lot of not showing you stuff. Yeah. He does a lot with, like, audio, sound, and, like, stuff, like, just out of your vision reach. Between Worlds remake with Sam Raimi at the helm? (laughs) Give us Bruce Campbell, and I'll, you know, maybe consider. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he's Joe. (laughs) Yeah. No, no. Have Bruce Campbell play the daughter. Oh, God! No, have him play the nurse. (laughs) (laughs) Not enough screen time. (laughs) Just have him turn around and look at the camera. Oh, God, you're playing with things. You don't know what you're playing with. <laughs> Biggest chin in the world. Ah! But it's just like, if he's the daughter, could you just imagine him looking at the screen? Just give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> God, I'm trying to think of like, because there were a lot of fucking out there moments in this movie, and I think I covered all the ones I remember, but That's I'm trying thing. to There think. were so many like small, weird things yeah. that you gloss over completely because of everything else being so what the fuck. Yeah, we're we're fixing the motorcycle, and now there's a water fight. Oh God! And the mom just standing there again, accepting of this, yeah, like, not asking a fucking like, thing. Oh, that's kind of weird. My daughter's flirting with the dude I'm having sex with. She brings it up at one point. She's like, "I see the way she looks at you," and it's like, "And you're you're not you're not gonna like bring this into question." Nope. Her first thought is, "I gotta talk to that nurse." Hey, is there something wrong with my kid? Yeah, a different ghost. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, that makes sense. Well, she did say, and again, another throwaway fucking line, that um, mom goes, she didn't try to get you with the googly eyes, did she? Because she'll do that just to make you, just to make me mad at her. And I'm just, and I'm just like, so that was their excuse for like the whole, so they're basically like, fuck, I, yep, thought of one, <laughs> I thought of one, ding, ding, ding. Uh, oh, God, he's <laughs> on the couch. On the fucking couch, she starts giving him an over-the-pants handy, yep. and he doesn't stop a motherfucking thing. Yep. Doesn't question it, doesn't do anything. Now, you could say she's just, like, patting him up. No. no she she throws a blanket over it. Throws the blanket over and he's just sitting there. She's like, I hate okra. I'm like, what do you got in your hand there? <gasps> and this is well before she's like, by the way, I'm your dead wife. Yep, yep, yep. Way before. <laughs> Again, extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, it's... Mm. It was an experience. Never said it was a good one. <laughs> but um, And the only reason this movie is not going in the sale pile at my house is because it's so bad the world needs to know. So we can learn from our mistakes. This is film preservation at its best. <laughs> so, look, you don't have to lie to yourself, all right? <laughs> I've seen, I'm not, I've seen some, some doo-doo oh, here yeah, lately. I'm, I'm not going to some- lie bad stuff like we i mentioned it earlier like belly was right next to it and no offense to the fans of belly because when i went to letterbox that movie has some it has a pretty solid average score on letterboxd i watched the movie and the only like good performances to me i mean i i mean at the time i think dmx was dabbling his toe in that come on dmx has been in movies yes i um nos was terrible he has no acting chops whatsoever. And the only other good actor in that movie, I believe, was uh, Method Man. Method Man was good, too. But that movie was like a fever dream. I feel like if they, uh, if if the writer, producer, director of Between Worlds might have had a better looking movie or an interesting looking movie if they took some ideas from uh, the movie Belly. I, I'm not going to go in deep on that one because it's a completely different movie. But I've seen it a few times. Big DMX fan, so I am too. I'm, I'm a huge DMX fan, and and that movie came. I was like, oh, I want to check this out. And it, was, it was it was one of those. that was like, this is average. Yeah, like I'm glad I got it on sale, though. I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> so the the director and writer and producer is named Maria Pulera, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to tell you guys until we started, but this is actually a double feature. We're gonna go watch her other movie, Falsely Accused. No, we're not. No, we're fucking not. That was that, terrible. That, What's falsely accused? Is that a new case? Oh, yeah. No, it's two hours. It stars Rosanna Arquette. 
Okay. A. When a young woman is falsely accused of murdering her brother, she must catch the real killer to prove her innocence. Along the way, she encounters unexpected love, sadness, and hardships, as well as deep insights about crime, herself, and destiny. That's it. I'm going to the garage to give. It has a lower <laughs> average rating on Letterboxd than Between Worlds does. Wow. I mean, was this her second effort? I believe so. Oh, no. I mean... I, I guess it no, could be. No, this was her first movie. Oh, shit. So it did get worse is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Uh, like this, Wait, But this is lower than yeah, that. Th- lower average. Okay. It's got an average rating of uh, one. Oh. <laughs> That's just a one. It only has six reviews on it. <laughs> Are one of them her? <laughs> <laughs> there is. The highest one is a four star. Wow. From someone who's clearly trolling. Oh. Um, Between Worlds, however, has an average rating of 2.1, which is 1.1 higher than my rating. Uh, I mean, I I guess there are some fans out there. I don't even see, like, uh, people who are into choking being into this movie. (laughs) Like, Look, some people just really hate themselves. These are also the only two films this woman has worked on ever, in any capacity. mm. Okay. Well, I, I, she wrote, direct, wrote and directed Falsely Accused Between Worlds, executive produced Falsely Accused, produced Between Worlds. And that's it. That's mm. everything. <laughs> that's all she did. Ugh. That is li- quite literally all she wrote. Yeah. Quite <laughs> Angela Lansbury would have done a better job. <laughs> also, you know what the tagline for Between Worlds is, right? No. Oh my God, I saw it. It was something stupid. Vengeance is born in hell. That makes no sense to the plot of the movie. Yeah. The barely plot of the movie. Was that nothing? Is like, Jason going to show up in this movie? What vengeance what? did she, what did the ghost, like dead wife enact? Let me read this synopsis for you, because especially the, view, the listeners, you all heard the synopsis we gave in the beginning. <laughs> this is the official synopsis of the film. Oh, hold on, I gotta, I gotta post up. Here we go. Let's do this. Uh. Joe, a down-on-his-luck truck driver haunted by the memory of his deceased wife and child, Mm -hmm. meets Julie, a spiritually gifted woman who enlists his help in a desperate effort to find the lost soul of her comatose daughter. But the spirit of Joe's dead wife proves stronger, possessing the young woman's body and determined to settle her unfinished business with the living. Now that sounds so much cooler than the shit we watch. It does. That sounds like we're going to have like an illegitimate like supernatural thriller where it's like... Ghost and shit. Nope. Just, nope. I, nope. I know this is me splitting hairs at this cinematic masterpiece. Uh, <laughs> but um, if she is so, like, uh, like big into the spirit world and knowledgeable of this world, how come she just can't sense that that's not her daughter? Well, there's a, there's a part where after the daughter takes over and things are transpiring between Nicolas Cage and the daughter wife that uh daughter wife <laughs> she like wakes up in the middle of the night because she sees it happening and she's like huh I wonder what's happening she goes to the couch in, in her dream and Cage oh, is gone and it's cause he's banging and then uh, she, well she wakes up she comes there and he's asleep on the couch she's like oh oh thank god I'm glad he's not you know having sex with her and it's like Psych. <laughs> Next scene. Wet t-shirt contest on the motorbike. <laughs> My God almighty. Not a question had. Not a nothing. Just okay with everything. Uh, Trying to fix the motorcycle so they can sell it online. Also, another trope that bothers me in movies. If you're going to smoke in the car, roll down your damn window. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? And I, and I also love the old school, and I do appreciate, is it bad that like one of the best shots of the movie was like that shitty, obviously not in a truck, truck scene where it's raining and it's just like, dude, they're some, the cast, the crew are outside shaking the truck and they're just like, down, 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 down. I miss the days of like the 70s and 80s driving a car scene where they're clearly in front of a screen of like oh, yeah. a car traveling and they're just like sitting there. Like that would have been cool. Fucking Tarantino still does that shit. I know. It just, there's just something about that look. That I just yeah. enjoy. Oh, yeah. Like Batman and Robin running down the road. Yeah. <laughs> that shit cracks me up. But, like, it's also one of those, like, you can have, like, a really tense scene and let there be something like that happening. Not just two people and there is just, it's like a dull blue outside the windows. And, yeah, like, some guys just like, 
God. The only, the only other thing I can think I mean, there are two other people. It's like Tweedledee and Tweedle Dumbass, the friends of the daughter who... Smoke I, weed. Yeah, who, like, smoke weed. I do like that baller move of the mom just, like, straight up taking their stash. Yeah. Just not while she's on real drugs. Okay? And then smokes... <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> I found an interview with the director. Oh, shit. What we got? <clears throat> Spill the tea. <laughs> so they filmed in Alabama because of the fantastic tax credits. Absolutely. And, uh, Roll the, time. The <laughs> Thanks, me, Mom. The question is, I understand Nicolas Cage can be quite unpredictable on set, which is something you want. Is it difficult to get everyone on the same page making the same movie? And so uh, she says, I'm very much for that spontaneity and catching that energy because to me, you get a very visceral performance from the actor, and that is the magic. It's very true, and I feel that not having a rehearsed and very stick-to-the-script style allowed me to get that performance from the actors, so I thrive on that. And I found Nicolas Cage to be very inspiring, and I love that unpredictability. And it was up to the other actors to keep it on the kilter so the film would stay on the rails. I took a lot of risks, and I loved it. But throughout the movie, my producer is going, Maria, what are you doing? What's going on here? And here she lies because she says, and I quote, and I'm like, trust me, it's all under control. Hmm. But she's the producer. Yeah. So she, she said that to herself. Apparently. So she Wait, was, I didn't even catch that. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, every movie has more than one producer. Like you imagine, executive, blah, 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 associate, blah, blah, blah. Could you imagine her getting up from the director's table? She's like, I gotta go talk to the producer. So she walks into a room, it's just a mirror. God. What if she actually has, like, legit, like, like three-way split personality and, like, multiple man and she just, I mean, multiple woman. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot in this interview and... It sounds like she disappeared so far up her own ass that she didn't actually see the movie she was making. It makes me wonder about, like, uh, like some actors, like, you hear about, like, they don't watch their movies after they're done. Right. Uh, but then some of them, like Kurt Russell, who apparently watches himself in movies all the damn time, mm -hmm. uh, it makes me wonder if Cage goes back and watches the movies that he's in and then, like, comments on them afterwards or if he just makes them, cashes the paycheck... And then fucks off. I feel like he might watch them just because of the auteur that he is, you know? Maybe. I don't know. He might not. He might have that Johnny Depp syndrome where his own face makes him freak out. I used to be... I had to get used to, like, seeing... Johnny Depp apparently doesn't watch his own shit. Huh. But um, I had to get used to, like, seeing my own mug, like, doing TikToks all the freaking time. And I'm just like... Right. And that still sometimes... And again, people are like, just because you see the final product does not mean I didn't shoot that bitch, like, 18 different times. Okay? Right. <laughs> but yeah, I just... Because, like, yeah, I saw that interview with, like, Wyatt Russell and Kurt Russell. He's like, no, I never watch my stuff. And Kurt Russell's like, oh, I watch my shit all the time. <laughs> and Wyatt's like, yeah, I know. I'll come to visit you one day. And, and big trouble on the other channels on the TV. He goes, yeah. And he's like, occasionally he'll just lean around the corner and be like, hey, come watch this part. I'll tell you what I actually did. And I'm like, God damn it, Kurt Russell. Another movie I haven't seen until this podcast. Oh, yeah. Big Trouble in Little China? Yeah. So I love that movie. It's fucking great. I saw it when I was a teenager, and it scared the shit out of me at the very end. Oh man, we're talking about great movies now. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, we gotta cleanse ourselves. Yeah, but like, the, yeah, the two dipshits. I mean, they're one of them kind of reminded me of Cody Rhodes a little bit. Yeah, Not, it was Shaggy and Cody Rhodes. Shaggy from Scooby Doo yeah. and Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Cody Rhodes without the bleach blonde hair. Yeah. Really? It's so, so fucking bad. Yeah, it's um. The ghost of a woman in my girlfriend's soul. We're going to have to uh, sneak a copy of Between Worlds so all three of us can own a copy. If I find it, <laughs> in my, I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> if, it's, if I get it in here without you knowing, you have to keep it. That that's, the rule. that's the rule. Mm, if I get word. this set in here. <laughs> I need your help. You understand this, Barney? <laughs> Barney loves me. All we're going to do is ask Allison, hey, Allison, come pick this up. Turn it on. It should be right there. That's kind of like how you convince one of my friends to, to buy that kaiju book for me. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I still haven't read it yet. <laughs> God. Yes? <laughs> They summoned you. I know. We might need you for a master plan at some point, but you can't tell uh, your boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do... We, we, <laughs> see, she's in. Damn, you're supposed to be on my side. I didn't even say what it was, and she's like, I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> even I didn't think she'd be on your side for that. I, was... <laughs> I, hope, I hope that catches someone. <laughs>
So yeah, it was a terrible movie. Yeah, we cannot recommend you stay away from it enough. God. Yeah, again, like, watch mm. just about anything else. The old way was better. <laughs> Jujitsu was better. If you wind up yeah. happening upon it and watching it, make sure immediately go to Reddit to r slash iBleach <laughs> and spend the next. I don't know, six hours on there. Like, just, your movie is called Between Worlds, and we're literally in somebody's fucking trailer. Like, <laughs> I, like, something. Like, even, like, one of those camera filters over it. Like, make it red, make blue, some shit. It's, this was... Have Doctor Strange walk on set. <laughs> but we'd have to have Sam Raimi again. Yeah. <laughs> Multiverse of Madness is good. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. And I'm also really sad because I thought how much more interesting it might have been if Taika Waititi had directed Multiverse of Madness and then you give Sam Raimi Love and Thunder so we have a Sam Raimi directed Gore the God Butcher story. I don't want Taika Waititi to touch anything else at this point. I used point. to like him so much and he's such a fuckboy asshole now. Yeah. Somebody Ooh. else that has ruined a lot of their goodwill. That disappeared so far up his own ass. Hasn't like two of his uh, properties been? Isn't like we what we do in the shadows and that pirate? Uh, what is that called? Well, Our flag means death or whatever. And aren't uh, they both canceled? Flag no, means uh, death got canceled because he was going to leave anyway, and they didn't want to do it. What we do in the shadows is just ending. Yeah, yeah. Like, I figured that was. Yeah. I mean, that last. They're, they're like, hey, this is run its course. And plus, Jermaine Clemens is the more driving force behind what we do in the shadows. Yeah. Okay. That was his, like, baby. Okay. Love that man. We're He's saying so much funnier. Yeah. What we're saying, Taka, is calm the fuck down. We used to like your stuff. What happened? Your soccer movie he got hard. addicted to being famous. <clears throat> man, some sorry. people. He got addicted to being famous, married Rita Ora, and now he just does whatever he wants to because they keep paying him to do it. I guess. Dump trucks full of money, I guess. I, why can't anyone back one of those up to me? <laughs> right? Will I get some fuck you money? There's a couple of days where me and Justin just start spitballing ideas for like MCU projects. We're like, Marvel, call us. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't, I have oh God. It's the first time in a long time where I'm just like, new Marvel movies out, I don't care. Like, I hate it saying that out loud too, but like, I'm just like, well, we'll see if the next one's okay, I guess. I'm still excited for stuff. I am too. It's just like, you know, I Echo I'm was really good. Not as Which one? Echo? 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 Yeah, I really like Echo. Echo was a good series. Yeah. It's really hardcore. The last episode's kinda wonky, but the majority of the show is really solid. Yeah. Then again, to show you how far behind I am, I um were left behind. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't even seen uh, the third season of Netflix's Daredevil yet. That's about the uh, the Netflix stuff, all three seasons of Daredevil are great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Defenders was pretty good. I like Defenders. The I first six it. episodes of Luke Cage are really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The like first it. season of Jessica Jones is really good. Yeah, I enjoyed that. The first episode of Punisher is good. I liked uh, oh. I liked where Iron Fist was heading, and I wish they would have actually gotten to explore the actual Jason Aaron stuff. But yeah, I haven't even finished season two of The Punisher. I can't fucking do it. It's I can't not, do it. It wasn't great. Like, I still haven't completed an Iron Fist. I just gave a fuck up. I didn't. I got to, like, episode nine. What are we doing? I can promise you that Daredevil season three is fantastic. You said the first episode, you're sucked in. Go okay. I need, I need to knock that you out. You do have to finish Defenders first. I have finished Defenders. Okay. Okay. There's only one good. season, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah then I got it. So, yeah. So, you know the point where, spo- spoilers, uh, Matt had a building dropped on him. Yep. <laughs> Daredevil season three. Yeah, just pick up from there. Okay. Yeah, so you're good. Just jump into it. It's worth it. Yeah. Uh, uh, that Bethel guy, Wilson Bethel, uh, whatever his name is, Bullseye, mm. is fan fucking tastic, and they're bringing him back for Born Again. Mm. Okay. And yeah, it I seems can. like they're going in the right direction with all the Born Again stuff. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yeah. I'm going to piss off Marvel fans even more. She Hulk, amazing. She Hulk. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Marvel fans didn't hate She Hulk. Dudes hated She-Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, girls who've never read a She-Hulk comic hated exactly. that. When when uh, uh, when Matt, when Daredevil shows up in that episode though, and uh, she takes him home, I remember us watching the episode. Matthew, Matthew, what are you, Matthew? <laughs> and then he has to do the walk of shame back, and I was like, that was so great. To be fair, that's pretty on point for Daredevil. I know. Yeah. Daredevil and Black Widow in the comics uh, and Hawkeye, those three, they get around. They be doing some stuff. So Jennifer <laughs> gets around. Yeah. There's there's a there's plenty of Avengers books where it's her and Wasp just sitting around talking about mm-hmm. where they've been. Oh <laughs> God, too. Yeah, and Bucky. Yeah. 
And Spider Man. Spider Man's dated everybody. I bet technically, semantics and all, multiple man probably got around too. <laughs> Just depends on if you know if it's a dupe or not. That's the second multiple man um, reference I dropped in the show. What, what am I? What am I doing? I here? What am I doing here? Multiple man's my favorite mutant. <laughs> I think he's great. I only have like uh, the cinematic versions of him to go by. Oh, no, he, there's my favorite multiple man moment is in his own miniseries from a few years ago. It's a little side story. It's Christmas, and he's like, "Oh shit, I didn't get any of the X Men any gifts." And I'm here, and they're going to be, like, real peeved at me. So he's got a, he does time travel shit, so he's got a watch. from I think it was Benjamin Franklin's watch. He goes, okay, I can do it. And so he goes to Wolverine, like, I got you this gift. Like, oh, that's Benjamin Franklin's watch. That's awesome. And then every other X-Man in the mansion starts walking in. So he got you the same watch? Because what he did, he duped himself holding the watch so that he could give every X-Man uh, the same gift. Jamie's like, that's such a dick sometimes. I love Jamie Madrock so much. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Between Cage Greatness Worlds. <laughs> I think my nose is bleeding. <laughs> uh, thank you all for listening. We're, again, we're doing our uh, monthly schedule as of right now. Uh, we may pop in with an extra episode here or there, just depending. Uh, please join us next month for Dream Scenario. Woo! Day 24 in gonna, Cage! Hopefully going to be much better. Than between worlds. Oh yes, it has to be. It does. <laughs> uh, so, Jeremy, where can the people find you on the internet? Uh, so you can find me on my art stuff that I do. It's uh, Press Art F Four uh, on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I also have uh, my own show. Uh, it's called The Instruction Booklet. Uh, hopefully, by the time this episode comes out, our next episode about the golden age of video games will be out. Uh, it's with me and my friend Michael. Uh, and we talk about we, we're working our way through just video game history and we do like off episodes where we talk about like uh, we did an episode about easter eggs and we've done episodes about a weird doom mod called my house so yeah uh, that's on the instruction booklet uh, it shows up on the cage channel because they're so nice enough to let us you know piggyback sure. <laughs> so yeah that's where you can find me Cannon. Uh, yes Social media influencer extraordinaire. That is correct. I am the best uh, internet who has ever interneted. Uh, yeah, I have been that cannon guy. You can find me at that cannon guy on barely on Twitter anymore, but you know, it's there. Uh, Instagram, which I'm trying to actually do more on, uh, it's the one I did the least on. Letterboxd as always, and of course, the TikToks. Yep, uh, and we will see you all next month. Thank you for joining us. Bye. How absurd. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? How absurd. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence.